combine you and Mr. Art on that one. You, you, you guys had a very similar question on that. Do you have anything to add to it? Um, not really. I think you covered it. Yeah, the only thing is, uh, you know, with, with your with your focus on a three seventy five versus a four sixteen, I I'd used a four sixteen, um, and I, I feel kind of bitter now because I put my body through a lot of abuse with that rifle, and I could have used a three seventy five and saved a lot of Sturm and Drang. So that's that's my take on it. And, and a few dollars on ammunition. And a few dollars on ammunition, like shooting a howitzer, you know, holy mackerel. But. You, you had one of those situations where bigger is better. I mean, yes. your first Buffalo, actually, you had both of these situations, but your first Buffalo, because of the big caliber, we didn't get stomped on in that riverbed in Miss Island. Yeah, we, uh, we, had, we had, you know, the, 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 uh, for the rest of you guys, I had, had one of these situations where, where my first shot was not, uh, not enough to uh, um, kill him. So we had to trail him and we got into a wash um, that was, it was, it was, it was fairly thick and he was, there were two Buffalo and one of them went trotting off and you could hear him crashing through the brush. And I assumed that was both Buffalo. Well, what it was is the wounded buff had stayed at the bottom of the wash and there was a game trail that went right, right, literally right by him. And by the grace of God, we, uh, we just went, didn't choose to go down the great game trail, just kind of moved out. We were about five feet further on, uh, on one side of that game trail. We just walked that way. And uh, all of a sudden uh, it was, it was just, uh, it was like Vietnam, you know, Nathan was, uh, Nathan was on point and he assigned uh, a field of fire for himself. And then we had the two, uh, the two trackers in the middle with, you know, they were armed with sticks and, um, and then I was dragged, and I, my, my primary field of fire, any guy who's been in the military, you kind of appreciate it. Uh, I was assigned a primary field of fire, obviously, to the rear and to the left. And uh, we hadn't proceeded more than 20 feet. And both, both game scouts, you know, did one of these and pointing, you know. And, and sure enough, there he was. And, 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 of course, all hell broke loose then uh, with Nathan and, and me firing. And it was that uh, knocked him down, and he stayed down. Um, I brought this up. You know, just just while we're, this is a 416. If you can see it, it's not. It, it, you know, that's a 416 Rigby. Um, I think it's 400 400 grain solid, and it can't. Uh, this this was out of out of the second Buffalo, and you can't uh, see it. But if you can imagine the energy, and this was still inside the front end of that Buffalo, um, it was stopped kind of in his spine above the sh uh, between his shoulders. Um, and that 416 at 2,500 feet per second, and the actual the bullet is actually bent. The, obviously, the front end had stopped, and the rear end of that bullet was still moving a little bit enough to put a bend in the bullet. So that's that's how much energy that buffalo absorbed from that rifle, and I'm happy he did. I'm done. And and um, and so in that situation, that buffalo was feet from us, and at that point. 400 grains is better than 300 grains. And I mean, and then on your second one, uh, he had a situation where he made a good shot on the first at normal Buffalo. I don't like to shoot Buffalo at a hundred yards. I want to shoot them at 40, 50, 60 yards. But um, he had another situation where he had to know what his gun did at 150. Cause I think he put a finishing shot in at quite a distance for a 416. Um, but anyway, so that was that was that. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna move on to who are we gonna move on to next? Um, Charlie. Yo. Where, where, where are you at on my? All right, I, I, I'm gonna pull you up. I'm gonna pass up a couple other questions because it's uh, uh, more uh, more shooting stuff. But but I, I'll come back to those. Um, you uh, you asked me. Question number one was about elephant, and then uh, second one was about baiting. So um, I'm going to tackle this first one. Uh, you said when elephant hunting with a double, what is your preferred shot for the client to take? Uh, head frontal, uh, head side, or a 
heart, lung, side on. Um, all right, so it sounds like you may be going, you may be going elephant hunting. Uh, I've done one, thinking okay. about another, but not, but the second one will be with a double. Okay, good deal. Um, what, what, why'd you choose to do it with a double? Why do you want to hunt with a double now versus the bolt action first? I, that always interests me. Well, the first elephant hunt, I got within 35 yards of the beast and shot him. Uh, so it was with a 416 Ruger. And, uh, you know, my that was what I had at the time. And I've acquired a double, a 470 Nitro. And I want to do a, uh, an elephant hunt with that. So, you know, it's, it, it's uh, six of one, half a dozen of the other as far as whether it's a bolt or the double. Um, but it seems to me that when I see people using doubles, they're often trying to uh, catch them on the side body shot. Um, and I'm just wondering if that's the standard uh, or the norm that you see in Tanzania uh, and other places. Okay. All right. Well, great question. So, uh, and, and to confirm, you said most of the stuff you reviewed, if, if the client has a double, he goes ahead and, and tries for a body shot. And that's kind of confusing. Is that? Yeah, I see, I see that frequently yeah. in videos where they're shooting at the body. Yeah. And I'm just wondering whether that's because they don't have confidence in the accuracy uh, with an open sight, or if it's just easier to take that body shot, which I think it probably is. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the, I, I think there's probably two main things there. Um, the first one, the, the, the first one is the elephant's going to really decide. Um, so most of the elephant that I've hunted have not uh, been in Tanzania. I've hunted several in Tanzania. Most of my experience on elephant was, um, was Mozambique followed by Zim followed by Botswana. Um, you know, uh, and then somebody else asked about elephants. So I'm going to get into some differences on ivory and stuff later, but your question is a good one. Uh, Charlie, it's a good one. So the, uh, I think the, the first thing is most people want to hunt their elephant with a double rifle. Cause that's what happened, uh, in the books and what they've read about, uh, and the second thing, and equally, not even the second thing, but the other thing is with that double rifle, you plan to get very, very close, which I think is the most exciting part of hunting elephant is to be within, I mean, to shoot them at 50 yards is far for elephant, right? I mean, 20 yards, 25, 30 is just, that's really, really exciting. Um, but at that distance, even with these big calibers, uh, I think the pH probably does not have confidence in the person's accuracy with open sights on a double rifle. And he goes for the sure thing and tells them to shoot in the body. Um, I leave it up to the client's choice. But I think that's probably why you've seen a lot of people with double shooting them in the body. Um, to me, that, that that's actually the worst way to go in in one way, because if I'm gonna if I have two barrels, okay. So a, a good pH's job is to get the client in position where he kills his animal. That's the name of the game, right? Now I've got a client that has two shots, so I'm gonna give him, tell him to shoot the first of his two shots into the into the body and then he's going to do a follow-up shot and then something's going to happen and I'm going to shoot that I'm going to shoot again. Um, I, I don't like that idea. I would rather with a double rifle, you have a lot of knockdown power. If the elephant lets you choose, uh, I, I like a brain shot with those bigger calibers. Um, but it also depends on the client. The client must be able to shoot that double rifle accurately. Uh, elephant's brain is roughly the size of a football, a little bit bigger. Um, and, and it's, it's hard to find in that mass of gray. So it really takes a skilled, a knowledgeable hunter that's skilled with open sights to, 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 to find the brain inside that, inside that head. 
Now, nowadays you can put these reflex sights on these doubles. That's a good idea if you can't see well. Um, and I'm seeing a lot more people do that. Putting a scope on a double, I've always kind of thought that was a weird idea, um, defeats the purpose of the tool. But once again, the tool is yours and you can set it up however you want. Um, but so, so that's, uh, so, so that's my two cents on that. But then, so what's my preference? My preference is to be close and hopefully if the client is comfortable to take a brain shot on his elephant. Um, he must know, and this is talked about ahead of time, a, a hunter must know that if he takes a brain shot on an elephant and it does not go straight south, meaning to his knees, that it's, it, that there's going to be a follow-up shot. I mean, he can follow up and then I'm, and then I'm going to follow up. Um, the brain shots all or nothing deal, right? And most elephant country is very thick and a brain shot elephant will not die in a timely manner and it does not leave a blood trail. And I, I learned my lesson on that, right? So the client, there's a lot of, I mean, safari hunting is a team sport. I don't care what anybody says, it's a team sport. And a brain shot in the forest, in the, a brain shot in the forest at, at 15 yards, that elephant will be out of your view in a second. And if you've messed up the brain shot, you're, you know, 28 miles and in, in a day and a half later, you're going to wish the pH fire. Yeah. Okay. Um, what well, you have anything to add to that? Did I cover that one good? Yeah, it's fine. Thank you. I, fine, but not great. No, I, <laughs> I, you know what you speak to, uh, the pH making a follow on shot. And I think some people don't recognize the fact that that, that has to take place, uh, or you're going to have a wounded animal, uh, get away from you. And yeah, you, you talk about 28 miles. I've got a friend that's not on here tonight. That's an AH member that lives in Oklahoma. And that's exactly what he and his pH had to do, uh, is track an elephant through, I think he said 18 hours and they found him 22 miles away. Uh, you know, because the, the, the pH didn't take the shot that he needed to take. So yeah, I don't, I don't feel like walking that far. Thank you. Right. So, like I said, safari hunting is a team sport, and I think those of you that have been there know that. The trackers are important. Uh, the cook is important. The trackers are important. The mechanic is important. The pH is important. Most important is the client, and it is the pH's job to put the client in position where he kills his animal, but it doesn't always go as smooth as that. So it's, uh, it's something to really understand when – you know, this isn't an Impala on a game ranch that we're going to find, pick up, you know, a week later. Uh, it, it's, it, it's, it's a real situation and people, people can get hurt. Uh, it's rare, but people can get hurt. So it, it is something to think about and something to consider when, when you're having these discussions with your professional hunter. And, and, and communication is the most important thing with your pH. I mean, being able – to, to really communicate and, and, and have a good open channels uh, with your pH, uh, that, that's real important as well. So good question, uh, I appreciate it, sir. Um, yep. I'm gonna come, I'm gonna try to come back to another one of yours uh, in a little bit, I'm gonna try to come on back to one. Um, I, I had a note here just to add to it. I, I had a note that said, uh, if the client wants a body shot, then, then I prefer it because 10, you know, 95 times out of a hundred, that body shot, I can see where the bullet hits. He gets a backup shot into it and that elephant dies 80 yards away and I never touch the trigger. And I like that. So I do like a body shot, but if a guy's got a double and he's got experience and we're getting in close, take him in the, take him in the brain. That's what I say. So, that's just another side note I forgot. Um, all right, we're moving on to Mr. Mark. Where are you at, Mark? Top right over here. Can you hear me, Mark? Me? With, yeah, me. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, Mark Fuller. Mark Fuller. There you go. Yes. 
All right. Um, you asked me about buffalo hunting, and you asked me about choosing between two of your rifles. You want to kind of um, expand on that, for, or just you, you kind of expand on that for me, and then I've got I've got an answer for you. Yep, yeah, um, got a 375 H and H left-handed. I'm left-handed. Yeah. And, I've, got, uh, I've got the same disease. I'm left-handed as well, so I know. The, yeah, I know the deal. Good time, huh? And I got a 404 Jeffrey that's right-handed, and I can crack off a second shot faster with a left-handed one, but I can top off my loading better, you know, with a right-hander. I just I've had to shoot right-handed gun so long it's hard to reload left-handed for me is all okay so you know um, what i mean yeah yeah so so the the 375 is the 375 is the right-handed one which one's right-handed no. uh this 404 all right 404 okay so so basically my answer is a question back to you um which one uh, and there's two of them which one which one do you shoot the best if i if i laid if i laid a thousand dollars on the table and you had one shot at 80 yards which gun are you going to pick up the check or cash <laughs> oh no no no, um, no we 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 deal in cash around here we, we <laughs> no i mean really well I mean, they're both, well, but the, the 375 comes up to my eye much quicker. So, yeah. and it's just, I do think it is a little easier to shoot, of course, but. Okay. Um, you cut out a little bit there on the first part, but but you, you said you'd go with the 375. That'd be the Probably one you just... shoot the most accurately. Yeah, it come, I mean, if it was a hurry up and shoot, I think that one fits me better, you know, as far as lining right up where I want it to be when I put it on my shoulder. So, okay, but but even forget about forget about the hurry up part. Like you got all, you got thirty seconds on the sticks. Uh, you you just you're probably more accurate with that three seven five. Yeah, probably not by much, but yeah, I think okay. so. Okay. And then the second question is, which one are you faster with? I mean, uh, are you fast? Are, you said you're faster loading the 375 or faster loading the, the I mean, well, the, uh, reload. The 375 because it's left-handed and I can operate the bolt without much work. You know what I mean? Yep. The, the right-handed one is, it's a, well, as you know, it's not as it could be. <laughs> That, that, that's right. That's right. So what I used to do is I'd shoot left hand and I roll it over and I my take my trigger finger and grab the bolt yeah. and, and, it, and it takes long. Um, so to me, there's no question. You, you bring the 375. Sounds fair enough. Uh, your first shot is better. You're a little more comfortable with it. Sounds like you're more comfortable with the optics. Um, yeah. Uh, but but you're more confident in that gun, and and shooting is eighty percent confidence, eighty percent here and twenty percent mechanics. So, and then you actually reload, shoot again, reload, shoot again. You do that better, faster with the left handed. So no, you bring the three seven five. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Good deal. So good question. I appreciate it. That's a specific one. Um, do you have any experience with those 350 grainers that they put in those nowadays? You reload. Uh, the 350 grain barns, or the, or what? It, what is it? Well, I'm not sure. I was just reading on AH the other day. Um, somebody was talking about 350 grain. Almost seems like it might have been Woodleys or something. I had a client from Missouri that loaded 350 grain something, and I don't remember the brand. Does anybody know? There's not very many companies that make them, so I, I don't know. Well, I'll let you know. Okay, but to answer the question, if uh, if you can get them and it's a decent bullet, uh, meaning a reliable saw, 
and a and a and a good solid. The 50 grains is not a bad idea. That 50 extra grains is not a bad idea for you. All right. Yeah. So I mean that that's that's what I would do. I'd try it out. I'd try it out. Um. All right. All right. Moving on down the road here. We got. Uh, Uh, trail, uh, let me see here. Uh, trail rated, are you on with us? I think. Yes, I'm on. Okay, good deal, sir. Good deal. I, I got, uh, I'm going to go with your first question. Um, your first question here. Um, you asked me what dangerous game, if any, would I recommend? Would I recommend for the otherwise uh, experienced hunter on his first African safari? So, is that uh, what's the situation there? You're you've never been to Africa and you're planning a, a dangerous game hunt. Is that accurate? Yes, that's. Uh, I've never been to Africa. Don't have plans yet. Don't have anything set up. But that's definitely the goal. And and I really appreciate this call and hanging out and, and absorbing all the information from the experienced hunters. Got a lot of experience hunting here in North America, hunted relatively dangerous game like uh, black bear, feral hogs, uh, but would want to do a dangerous game hunt in Africa when I go. I might only get one chance to go. So for the, for the person who's new to Africa, new to safaris, is there a particular one of the big five that you think is better suited for somebody on his first trip? Okay. Yep. Good. Good question. And, and and I I I like I like that one. And it 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 comes up, it comes up in our marketing quite a bit. People want to want to know that. So. In your case, you do not need a warm up planes game safari. If you're a competent shooter, with a lot, a decent amount of hunting experience, and and you know, I mean, you know the deal you've hunted. There's no reason that you need a warm-up safari, in my opinion. They're, they're, what you need probably is, is to hunt the animal that interests you the most. You're capable, you know, once again, it's a team sport, right? You're capable of, of, of doing any of it with the right pH in the right area. If you want leopard, then go for a leopard hunt. If you want a buffalo, if you like buffalo and uh, you read a lot about them and that's what you want to do is hear those big bullets thump that buffalo and get in close with them and you like tracking and you like hiking, man, go come to Tanzania and shoot two buffalo on, on, your, on your safari because you said you may be able to go once. So why not come and shoot two buffalo? Um, you, you want... Uh, if you're really excited about doing an elephant, I mean, you, you, you read, you know, all, all the books about the old ivory hunters and, and sneaking up on a tusker is what you want to do, man, go hunt elephant. So really just do whichever one you want. You don't need practice. And, and, and you know, life isn't about a warm up round. Get out there and do it. So pick the one you like the best and, 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 and go for it. All right. I like that answer. That's good. Um, your second question was how strict, and this is a quick one, so I'm going to hit it here. Uh, how strict are the caliber guidelines for dangerous games, specifically if the rules call for a 375 H&H or a 375, would it be okay to use a nine, uh, the 9.3 by 62? Um, and the answer is country specific. Some countries are sticklers on that type of stuff. Some countries don't even look at the serial. I mean, they really don't even look at the serial number, right? So it just depends. It, it really just depends. And once again, then on that type of thing, that's uh, uh, you'll ask that to the outfitter and 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 P8, uh, and and they'll tell you exactly what to do because it it is countries. You know, some people are a lot more sticky than other countries. Um, so, Nathan, yes, sir. While we're on this topic, what do you think of the 9.3 by 62 compared to the 375? I have very little experience with it, to be honest. 
uh, and um, I had Russian clients bring a couple to Mozambique and they did fine. I mean, they did fine. Um, up, to, up till then, um, the, uh, I, I hadn't seen, I haven't had a lot of experience with them really. So, um, the, not enough to draw an opinion. So I'm sorry about that. I don't, uh, I, I deal mostly with Americans. I speak American ease really well and I deal mostly with Americans. So I don't get much of the nine point, the nine point threes. No, I, I, I have both and I just found, I can't hardly tell the difference. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, the 9.3 is just a little bit smaller and then they, they don't they make a 62 and they make a longer one as, uh, as well? They make a 62, a 64 and a 74. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. The 9.3 by 62 is the very common, common one in South Africa. That's okay. been around forever down there. All right. All right. So yeah, just not enough experience with it. Um, oh, that's fine. The, uh, There was some, oh yeah, so there was something else that brought me on. Uh, so that question, uh, I answered it with your your outfitter will tell you, um, he's going to tell you if there's a trap waiting ahead of you or not, right? Um, or he should tell you that. And then the other thing is, this goes back to booking, right? The, the, um, outfitters sell hunts, professional hunters conduct hunts. Now, some outfitters will still guide hunts but not, not a lot of them, they, they really kind of run logistics and do more. But so my advice is not only to, you book with a good company or what you think is a good company, you book with an outfitter that you obviously have something in common with, or you, you think he's got good business practice, or he's got the best area for saber tooth tigers, and that's what you want to hunt. And uh, but if you can, please talk to talk to and schedule an individual PH. On a plains game hunt, um, I love plains game hunts. I love going to South Africa and shooting plains game. I love the Maasai land plains game hunts for lesser kudu and Garanook and. Um, but there's a lot of people that can guide that hunt effectively, and most of these PHs are are great people and fun to hang out with and you're gonna enjoy them, right? I mean, just so, but this meeting's about dangerous game and this is not cold beer on the back of the truck every single day. Although I do have cold beer on the back of the truck. But, but, but you need to really know the pH and are you gonna get along with this guy for 21 days? Does he have the same philosophy about this hunt or how to hunt? Um, is he excited about the hunt or is this just another number? Um, is, uh, is he old? Is he young? I mean, do you want a young, I mean, Zimbabwe PHs are some of the best out there. They were trained very well. Um, just some really good PHs. But the problem with them is they think they were a gift to hunting. And the first thing they do is walk your ass into the ground. Like they really, a lot of them get criticized for just walking people for no reason. Now, if you're 40 years old and in good shape, you, you may win. But if you're 70, you don't want to prove that you can walk further than your 40 year old or pH. Um, so pick, pick a pH that suits you and talk to that man. Spend enough time talking to the actual pH that on your dangerous game hunt, You've got the confidence in him that when the chips are down, he's got you. Um, you have the confidence in him that he's going to hunt the way that you want to hunt. And you like the guy. I mean, let's face it. We're all doing this because we enjoy it. Make sure you like him. I think a lot of people miss that. Address your, let sure. me address your question real quick before you sign off. Yeah, yeah. I think the most important one of the two, uh, like I said, you and I have talked specifics uh, several times in the past couple of years. But looking at, for the guys, you know, for me, we had our hunt coming up here, it, you know, I mean, two weeks ago already, we should have been over there. 
but we've always looked at Zim and, and South Africa, and we keep going back to South Africa, namely because the the, the price for, for DG over there, it, uh, it, it's quite a bit higher. And I guess my question was, what, where where is the the higher amount getting placed on? Is it is it because of the charter? Is it because of the, the locale trying to get into? Where, where is that that higher cost paying out in the end? Okay, all right. So uh, I'm going to rephrase it a little bit, but sure. I'm not going to rephrase it. I'm going to recap it so I, I get you the right stuff. Basically, you and your guys are looking for dangerous game. Um, and, and you've looked at Zim, you've looked at Tanzania, you've looked at probably a few other places, sure. but you keep coming back to South Africa yep. because of the price. Yes. Okay. Um, what, what animals? What animals are we looking for here? Uh, elephant, Cape buffalo. Okay. Um, the I guess the short the short answer is. It, it, a buffalo hunt in South Africa and a buffalo hunt up in Africa, you are not comparing apples to apples. It is sure. not the same thing. It is not the same hunt. And it just isn't. It just, it, it just isn't. So if you're not comparing the same thing, you can't compare the price. Um, sure, sure. Elephant, the elephant, it depends, right? Elephant in South Africa is pretty limited. You get some, you get some strange permits and ideas on the borders for PAC and blah blah. This type of funny stuff, non-exportable. Mm. Um, price point is right, but I, it and then you do get some good elephant hunts on the borders of Kruger that that, that are pretty affordable. Um, sure. But once again. It's, it's truly a different experience. And you're paying more to be in a more remote, more authentic experience. An okay. elephant hunt on the border of Kruger Park, I mean, I, uh, you know, it's just, it, it can be great, right? It, it can be great. But there is a lodge that has uh, 150 Coca-Colas in a big double freezer door thing. And there is a photo safari truck that you're going to have to avoid, whether you know it or not. The guides have talked, and you're going to. And there's permanent roads, and there's a fence of some kind. There is a fence of some kind around Kruger Park. Now, it may be part of a reserve that's Greater Kruger National Park, and that bull is just as wild as any elephant bull anywhere else. Sure. Um, well, I, I take that back. That elephant bull grew up seeing a whole lot of cars. So, you know, you're going to drive. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, it, so you're paying more for a harder, more authentic safari experience. And, and quite, so, it, 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 and that's a personal decision that you, that you have to make, right? It's, uh, you know, right now you can go, we can go shoot a buffalo, or you can go with anybody and shoot a buffalo for, seven, eight, nine, 10,000 bucks in South Africa and a buffalo hunt in Zim that is that same price range, you're not gonna probably see a lot of buffalo. Um, sure. If you go to the Booby Valley, which is a good place, there's some buffalo there. Um, you're gonna spend about the same as my hunt in Tanzania, which is twenty thousand. Um, that's with a buffalo on the ground, right? You're twenty. Sure. Um, but the experience that you get is different, and and it's it's just hard to say. But everybody's got a different. Uh, you got a different scale on value for money, um, experience versus results. Uh, a lot. I mean, it just goes on and on. Well, right? I, yeah, and I agree with exactly what you're saying. And you know, like I said, that's something you and I have spoke about before. And it's not, it, it hasn't came down to so much on, on our end of saying, hey, look, uh, your, your hunt's, like you said, 20 grand and go up to Zim for X, Y, Z amount. It's, it's trying to actually grasp uh, from the guys that have been there 
saying, hey, look, you got to do it. You got to do it. It's a different experience like you're saying. It's trying to actually wrap your mind around that to say, is it really that big of a difference? And I think a lot of the guys that are signed on right now, they'll, they'll probably say, you, you damn right it is. And that's why we keep leaning more and more to, like I said, you and I talk and trying to get over there with you just, just to experience it ourselves. 